Michael, you and I come from common roots, uh, neurophysiology and our graduate studies, fascinated with consciousness our whole lives. Uh, then we diverged. I went to do other things and you've really focused on consciousness and I'm really interested what your thinking is at this point about the nature of consciousness. Yes. Well, I think that, first of all, I would say most people who study this topic, what is consciousness, are on a completely the wrong path. Uh, and I would put it this way. I, I'm a neuroscientist. I think neuroscience has taught us that the brain is a big information processing device. Uh, and when an information processor introspects, that is to say, accesses internal data, and, and on that basis concludes that it has magic inside of it, you know, really the first question you would ask as a scientist is not how did it produce real magic. Right. As a scientist, I would want to ask, uh, how did it arrive at that self-description? And is there any utility to that kind of self-description? Does, does it have an adaptive advantage? Uh, what are the circuits that uh, compute that information? Or what happens when those circuits are damaged? Or even what's the evolutionary path that led to that kind of model of, of self? And these are all very scientifically approachable questions. Uh, but you can see that the, the, the heart of this approach is that uh, what we call awareness or consciousness is, first of all, it's in the information processing domain. And it's uh, self-description. It's uh, brains describing properties of themselves. There is the phenomenology of it, of where you have this inner experience of what it feels like uh, to smell garlic or cheese or... Yes, <laughs> yes, the magic inner experience. Uh, well, that's not magic, that's real. I mean, you smell cheese and garlic, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so one way to put it, I use this example sometimes to try to get across what I mean. Uh, as far out as this example sounds, I have a friend, he's a psychologist, he told me about a patient of his. Okay, this, this patient was delusional and he thought that he had a squirrel in his head. All right, which is, you know, a squirrel is a little bizarre, but these kinds of delusions happen. You couldn't convince him otherwise. He was absolutely mm -hmm. certain. Mm -hmm. You would tell him, well, that's illogical. He would say, yes, but some things transcend logic, yeah. right? So imagine we all had the squirrel in the head delusion, right? Now there's two ways to try to explain that, or two paths you could take. One you might call the hard problem of squirrel. How does a brain produce a squirrel? <laughs> Right, and you can study that all you want and not get to an answer because it's an ill-posed problem. It's actually quite non-constructive. Mm -hmm. Or you could address the question, how did, a, how did that brain arrive at that conclusion? How did it build that self-descriptive mm -hmm. model? And how come it doesn't know that it's a self-description? Why does it attach so much certainty and so much reality to it that uh, the brain com concludes that that's real, right? So that you can study scientifically. And this is really my approach to studying this question of consciousness, not how do we, how does the brain produce an inner subjective experience, but how does a brain arrive with such certainty that it has that? Okay, that's a very fascinating and fundamental difference. So, yes. So how do you, how then do you make progress on the latter? Well, you've already said you can't make progress on the former, no, no matter what you do. That's right. <laughs> well. Uh, we can um, uh, study, it's, uh, essentially this begs the question, if the brain is building this kind of self-model, well, brains build models of things. That's what brains do. They use information and signals and build informational models of things. It's one of the fundamentals. Uh, we build models of objects around us, models of our internal states. Um, and these models, they're always inaccurate. They're never perfect. Right. The brain's quick and dirty about things. Actually, one of the best examples is color, uh, and the color white in particular. Mm -hmm. Right, We all have this intuition, based on our visual system, that white is pure brightness, yeah. scrubbed of all color. Right. Right? It's, right. The opposite. Yeah. It's, it's the opposite. Newton figured that yeah. out, and, and everyone laughed at him yeah. in 1670 or whatever. Yeah. Right? Uh, so this is a model the brain produces that's quite uh, physically implausible. Right? So the brain produces these models. Now, um, the brain does a, a second thing that's, I think, really relevant to this question of awareness and consciousness. The second thing it does is it pays attention. 
I mean something very specific by that. Uh, so uh, attention is uh, basically a data handling method. It's, it's a mechanistic way of sorting data and focusing on a small number of signals at the expense of other signals. Yeah, yeah. Brains do this. Yeah. Uh, one can build it into a, a circuit and actually that kind of thing has been done. So it's quite mechanistic. Right? Now you might ask, uh, what happens inevitably when the brain combines these two uh, talents, building models and paying attention? What happens when the brain builds one of these kind of cartoonish schematized models of its own internal process of attention? Okay. And we think that this is what awareness is. Awareness is the brain's way of describing to itself what it means to focus attention on something. Are you using awareness and consciousness synonymously? Right, that's a very good question, actually. Many people do. Uh, I kind of prefer the word awareness. It's a little less loaded. Mm. Uh, so uh, consciousness, people mean so many different things. Right, right, right. right. And w w one of the biggest confusions, I think, is some people mean the content of consciousness. We talk about consciousness. People talk about, well, oh, I have memories, and right. you know, I, I have a personality, and you know, I can feel something and see color. Uh, but by awareness, what I mean is, we can be aware of things. Uh, doesn't matter what the things it are. It doesn't matter what the things are. What's the awareness? What does it mean to be aware of mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. anything at all? Mm -hmm. and what I'm suggesting here is, brains can pay attention to things. Uh, but brains can also essentially tell themselves or describe to themselves, what does it mean that I'm paying attention to that? Well, here's my story or account of what it means to pay attention to something. So in your formulation, the brain uh, self-constructs uh, uh, awareness in order to focus its own attention on its internal state? Uh, in order to control its attention. So in order to control something, it's good to have a model of it. Uh, I, sometimes I like to use the example of the general with his army and his little model army that he uses to keep track of the real army. You know, awareness is like the brain's model of what it means to pay attention to something. It helps you control it, control attention. And, and so the real focal point of the purpose is to control attention. Yes. So it husbands the yes. brain's resources to focus on what's the yes. most important thing at the moment. Yes. And it creates this thing that we call awareness yes. or broadly consciousness yes. uh, uh, in order to do that, but you're, but you're saying that that's what well, we've invested all this uh, importance in. Consciousness is really just this brain model to handle the, the, the attention uh, uh, al resource allocation issue. Yes, I would say that's how, it, that, that's the fundamental function. Probably its evolutionary root, yes. And we may have taken on all kinds of interesting other uh, uh, uses and functions since then. I mean, you know, you, you, you could say that the human hand is really a modified fin. <laughs> you know, it starts one way in evolution, uh, and it can take on all kinds of interesting other uh, properties. Uh, so I wouldn't want to deny the poetic properties of consciousness, but I do think it has its roots in, its, in a control mechanism to help guide attention.